In today's episode of Solve Mysteries, we're going to be observing a murder case from China that centers around wealth, corruption, and conspiracy. Although the criminal has been caught and is pronounced dead by lethal injection, what's interesting about this case is that the man behind the crime has hired multiple hitmen to end someone's life. So, what is the reason for the hitman killing the victim? Who hired these hitmen in the first place? Also, who are exactly these hitmen and where do they come from? These are questions that we're going to be answering as we dive deep into the facts of this case. Let's get into this case now. Born in 1966 to a poor worker's family in Laoyang City in the northeastern province of Laoning, Yuan Baojing was a Chinese billionaire who was the president of the Beijing-based Jinhao Group. In 1985, he passed tough entrance exams to the Beijing-based Chinese University of Politics and Law. He had to take a low-paying part-time job to support his college study. After his graduation four years later, Yuan joined the securities department of the China Construction Bank just as China began to restructure state-owned enterprises into joint stock companies. Officials, employees of the SOEs, and ordinary citizens were encouraged to buy stock. Most people remained lukewarm as very few believed the reforms were promising, so much so that the Communist Party had to order its members and government officials to take the lead. Yuan, however, saw this as an investment opportunity. China opened stock exchanges in Shanghai and Shenzhen, with many joint stock SOEs going public. Investors saw their share prices multiply geometrically. Yuan made a small fortune. He also proved to be an excellent stockbroker, with a record of 67 million yuan in a single day's trading volume. In 1992, Yuan quit his job with the CCB to set up his Jinhao company in the suburb of Beijing renting 8 hectares of farmland, growing good quality wheat seeds. He later soon made his first basket of gold of 3 million yuan. He then reoriented Jinhao's business to focus on securities. He helped restructure SOEs into joint stock companies, acquiring stakes in them, and then helping to arrange their initial public offerings. At one time, he jokingly called himself China's number one stock player. He may have well been. By 1996, his Jinhao's group assets were estimated to be worth over 3 billion yuan. Remembering his own bitter experiences in school, the newly rich yuan donated 10 million yuan to set up scholarship in 1996 to help poor university students. He continued to make other good charity donations and was given several awards for his outstanding achievements and good deeds. Which is why his arrest on November 24, 2003 by Liaoyang police was shocking news. Six months later, after registering his Beijing Jianhao Industrial Development Company in Beijing's Huairou District in 1992, he made more than 2 million yuan, which is approximately $249,007 of profits. Then he invested in the securities and bond markets before acquiring more than 60 companies. However, a fellow businessman friend named Lu Han manipulated a broker that caused Baojing to lose nearly 100 million yuan in Sichuan province in which he later informed this huge loss to brother Yuan Baoqi and to his accessory and former Liaoyang policeman Wang Jing at Beijing Hotel in late 1996. Because this loss was tremendous to Baojing, Wang suggested punishing Lu, so he offered a reward of 160,000 yuan for murdering Lu. And the person to agree with his deal was a man named Li Haiyang, who was a contract killer. In February 1997, Li Haiyang met Lu inside a Sichuan hotel and fired two shots at him. Luckily, the bullets missed Lu and Haiyang immediately fled the scene. However, Li was eventually caught and sentenced to life imprisonment. Starting from 1997, Wang wanted to borrow money from Yuan Baojing but was immediately turned down, which caused Wang to make a series of threats to Baojing to blow the whistle on his crime of organizing the attempted murder. Yuan Baojing was caught off guard since the failed murder attempt already sparked heavy attention from the media. So in early 2001, his brother Yuan Baoqi suggested killing Wang so that the word wouldn't be revealed to the public. Yuan Baojing agreed and gave him 300,000 yuan to pay the contract killers. Yuan Baoqi found Yuan Baofu and Yuan Baosen, who were both cousins to Baoqi and Baojing. On November 15, 2001, Yuan Baosen and Yuan Baofu stabbed Wang repeatedly, leaving him seriously injured shortly after Wang left his home. The duo immediately fled the scene, failing to get the task done. The Yuans didn't realize Wang survived the attack, so Bao Qi gave Baofu 90,000 won. 
Once Wang recovered from the attack, however, he continued threatening to Yuan Bao Jing, which led Yuan Bao Qi to pay Yuan Bao Fu another 180,000 yuan to finish the work. On the night of October 4, 2003, Yuan Bao Fu and Yuan Bao Sen waited for Wang near midnight when he left the Mahjong game shop in Liaoyang. As soon as Wang opened the gate to his apartment building, Bao Fu and Bao Sen shot him twice with a hunting rifle, killing him instantly on the streets. Police started an investigation on Wang's murder and ultimately, search for Wang's killer ended up at the Yuan's family's door and were all arrested. In the subsequent trial, the Yuan's appealed the verdict but were turned down, and the case played itself out to its present status. News photos in several Chinese papers show the beast spectacled Yuan wearing a white tracksuit and a long white scarf standing in front of the judge in the Liaoyang City Intermediate People's Court. After the judge announced the final decision, the Beijing Youth Daily quoted Yuan as saying, quote, I refuse to accept it. I will inform you, end quote. Yuan appeared very agitated as he was escorted out of the court. Yuan was eventually found guilty of the murder in January 2005 and was due to die by a firing squad on October 14, 2005. The day passed and the sentence was not carried out, which sparked rumors that the day before the execution date, his wife transferred ownership of shares worth 49.5 billion yuan to the government. The assets comprised of equities, including a 40% stake in an Indonesian oil company held by yuan through a Hong Kong firm. This was very strange because in China, conviction rates are consistent at 90% and above, and death sentences meant guaranteed execution. Nonetheless, on the morning of October 14, as he was about to be taken from his prison cell to be shot, an urgent order halted the execution of Yuan Baojing. The case at the time was being treated with extraordinary sensitivity by Beijing because two days later, Yuan's lawyer notified the Shanghai-based China Business News that Baojing had transferred all of his overseas assets, said to be worth tens of billions of yuan, to his wife the eve of his scheduled execution. Yuan Baojing's wife, Zhou Ma, is a well-known Tibetan dancer who teaches at the Beijing-based Central University for Nationalities. When her husband was sentenced to death, Bao Jing also requested her to transfer the money to the state, and she agreed. In addition, Yuan also passed his newly acquired wife bank accounts in Switzerland and elsewhere totaling huge amounts of money, his lawyer Lu Jiazong told Chinese Business News. Lu would not reveal the exact figure but told the newspaper there was enough to make Zhou Ma the richest woman in Asia. He wished for her to donate all of his wealth to the state, she said. But since his life has been saved for the time being, she said that she would spare no effort in attempting to reverse the verdict outright. Since Zhou Ma's statements and those of her husband's lawyer appeared in the Shanghai-based newspaper, both have declined to speak to reporters. However, her comments immediately generated speculation that Yuan escaped death at the last minute because of his agreement to donate a huge sum to the state, causing the public to think his delayed sentence was a conspiracy. This was quite unprecedented because according to the Supreme Court judicial interpretation, execution can be halted only when, number one, the verdict is found to be wrong, Number two, the convicted, awaiting death, provides leads to uncover other major criminal cases or renders outstanding meritorious service to the state. Or, number three, the convicted is pregnant. And since the execution has been halted, it must report to a higher court for a new ruling. Liu stressed that the suspension doesn't necessarily mean Yuan's life will be spared since the death sentence could still be carried out after a review. Although the obvious answer is that Yuan's life was spared by the contribution of what is believed to be an enormous amount of money to the state, a law researcher with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences warned in an interview with the standard that Beijing must handle the matter carefully or face jeopardizing the country's efforts to build a rule of law. The decision to spare Yuan's life suggests that money is simply above the law. It is more likely that new evidence has been found, therefore, a review of his case is needed. Or Yuan may have provided clues to the uncovering of other criminal cases. In March 2006, he and two accomplices were officially sentenced to death by a Liaoyang court for the October 2003 murder of Wang Jing. Billionaire Yuan Baojing and two other men were executed Friday 
in Liaoning province by lethal injection for the contract killing of a man who threatened to expose Yuan's attempt to murder a businessman. Yuan was put to death just 15 minutes after the sentence was pronounced, together with his brother and cousin Yuan Bao Qi and Yuan Bao Sen. In the Chinese press, he was considered the wealthiest convict to be executed in PRC history. The fourth criminal, Yuan Bao Fu, was sentenced to death, but the sentence was suspended for two years. That means the death sentence will be commuted to life imprisonment if he is a model inmate over two years. Yuan's wife, Zhou Ma, was not allowed to be present at the execution, so she was seen sobbing in a car outside the execution site and was later received Yuan's ashes from the courts, according to the Beijing Youth Daily. But at the same time, since China has no inheritance tax, she eventually inherited the bulk of Yuan's fortune and has a chance to live a comfortable life with their four-year-old son. Overall, the criminal case of Yuan Bao Jing and his family members is quite unusual. We hear so many rumors and myths about hitmen for hire that we sometimes forget that occurrences like this can actually become a reality. Although Yuan Bao Jing's wife and son are now left without a father, their lives continue on with an immense amount of wealth and prosperity. But the death of Wang Jing has now been brought to justice by the investigation of the Chinese authorities, hence why this case is now solved. Hey guys and gals, this is Mr. Shin Ramen, and I just want to thank you for making it this far. Did you enjoy the video? If so, it would be greatly appreciated if you can leave a like on this video and subscribe to this channel for more future content. Till next time, stay safe and stay scared.